Hello everyone, welcome back to Molecular Biology and Biotechnology with Lucy. I know you have either heard of a technique or a procedure in hospitals or by crime investigation team concerning collection of DNA. And I know you probably wonder how is DNA extracted, you know, from a crime scene or if it's a paternity issue, how do you you know get that DNA from the cells of the people who are concerned and so on and so forth. So today we'll be looking at DNA extraction method. In short, how do you isolate DNA from a biological sample, for example, blood, saliva, hair, semen, among many others. So stay tuned. The DNA extraction methods. The DNA extraction is a technique used to isolate DNA in a biological sample and DNA was first isolated in 1869 by Friedrich. So why do we isolate DNA? First of all, its isolation is often the first step before further analysis such as study of genetic diseases, development of drugs, DNA profiling in forensics and paternity tests, cloning, disease diagnosis, sequencing, GMOs and environmental testing. It is also relevant when we uh, want to study unique characteristics of DNA such as size, shape and function. So what are the sources of DNA? We have human sources such as blood, semen, saliva, urine, hair, teeth, bone and tissue. We also have other sources such as viruses, bacterial cells, plant material and other sources such as cigarette butts, envelope and stamps, fingernail clippings, chewing gum, bite marks and feces, particularly in forensic science. What are the essential components a DNA extraction procedure should have? One, it should maximize on DNA recovery, maximize on quality, that is be free from contamination with protein, carbohydrates, lipids and other nucleic acids. Also remove inhibitors like EDTA. We also need to inhibit nucleases that digest nucleic acids. And we also need to consider if we need double-stranded or single-stranded depending on which downstream process that we need. How much DNA can we recover? A diploid cell contains about 6 picograms of DNA while a sperm contains 3 picograms of DNA and an average white blood cell. We know that we have 5 to 10 times 10 power 6 cells per 1 milliliter of blood. Therefore, theoretically, the recovery of DNA per microliter of blood is around 30 to 60 nanograms. Quite minute there. Then how much DNA do we need? For restriction fragment length polymorphism RFLP procedures, we require 50 nanograms and it must be double-stranded DNA. And this is equivalent to approximately 2 microliters of blood. Now for PCR, polymerase chain reactions, we require an average of 1 nanogram. You see this is quite minute and it can be single or double-stranded. Now today, commercially available kits are sensitive even below 1 nanogram, that is around 100 to 250 picograms, which is very good, especially in degraded samples such as decomposing bodies and so on. So what are the most commonly used DNA extraction procedures? We have thermal extraction, aqueous solution based, organic solvent or phenochloroform, solid phase isolation either using spin columns or magnetic beads. So what guides the extraction method to use? It is your target nucleic acid. Do you want a single-stranded DNA strand? Do you want double-stranded? Is it total RNA? Is it mRNA? I, what is the source organism? Is it a mammal? Is it a lower eukaryote? Is it a plant? Is it a virus? 
what is your starting material is it a whole organ tissue cell culture blood what are your desired results what's most important for you is it the yield is it the purity is it the purification time and what is the downstream application if it's pcr is it cloning labeling blotting dna in the cdna synthesis and this protection assays among others so thermal extraction methods from here we can see that it uses heat so you will lyse your sample centrifuge to discard the supernatant so that you remain with cells most of the time this process is used by cell cultures when you're having a bacterial culture so here you're going to remain with a pellet which is your cells from the culture and then now you expose it to heat 100 degrees celsius for 5 to 15 minutes and this is going to release dna from the cells and then you centrifuge and you transfer the spanatant into a new tube because that is not going to continue your dna of interest this method is very quick low cost and it doesn't require specialized reagents it's one of the oldest methods Aqueous solution based also called inorganic extraction here we have to first do cell lysis that is to break up the cells that we release dna into the lysate and we have several ways of releasing we can have physical or mechanical means for particularly structured materials like tissue pieces plant material and we don't use heat so that we do not destroy acid nucleic acids it can be manual or automated manual like grinding under liquid nitrogen or automated either single or multi sample processing like sonication using beads or tissue grinders we have chemical means that is using a lysis buffer and it can have detergents such as NP40 Triton SDS to disrupt the lipid lipid membranes we have chelating agents like EDTA or GEGTA also added to inhibit nucleus activity we have keotropes that are also added guanidine salts and these interfere with OH groups to denature proteins for example guanidinium thiocyanate or guanidinium isothiocyanate we also have uh, it using alkaline salts which have low ph and high salt conditions this also helps us to precipitate the protein so that now if this is your sample you're going to have dna left in the solution because you have precipitated out the proteins and then from there now you can process to precipitate now your dna of interest using isopropanol we'll be looking at that so enzymatic disruption also we can use enzymes particularly for structured samples too like proteinases protein k to digest proteins in bacterial samples collagenase for plant material lipase for yeast lysozyme zymolase lyticase for tissues and bacteria and of course this is going to increase your cost and it's not suitable for rna because rna is very sensitive so now once you have done the digestion it means you remain with a cell lysate and your cell lysate will now contain your nucleic acids both of them but if you use RNAs, you will digest this one. If you use DNAs, you can be able to digest DNA if you need RNA. We have proteins and other small molecules. And now you need to separate them from your DNA. You need to remove them. And you can use a physical separation like centrifugation, filtering, bit-based clearing to get all the debris and remain with your nucleic acid of choice. And now once you have now gotten your your dna in a sample it has already been cleared off proteins and other cellular debris then you add ice cold ethanol or isopropanol to the dna sample to precipitate it out now dna is really soluble in water but it is insoluble in the presence of moderate concentration of monovalent cations such as sodium and alcohol and therefore it comes out of solution and this means it precipitates so you remember we have our lysate we have centrifuged and removed the debris then we have remained with a clear spanatant and this is where we are adding the isopropanol or alcohol and that will leave us with a pellet and this is our dna 
it has precipitated out and you can discard the supernatant. Now, after you have gotten your pellet, you need to wash it and again you use ice cold alcohol. Then centrifuge and you can do this two to three times. Then pour off the alcohol and dry. And now you can resuspend your now DNA into a slightly alkaline buffer like TRIS or TRIS EDTA for use in any downstream process. Organic solvent based extraction. Again, you disrupt your cell. You can use SDS as a detergent and proteinase. So, this is enzymatic, this is chemical lysis. To avoid RNA contamination, you can also add RNAs because in this case we are we want to extract DNA. If you want to extract RNA, then you use DNAs. DNAs. So that now you can degrade DNA if you are extracting RNA. Again now, after that you add your reagents and here we are adding phenochloroform isoamyl alcohol in the ratio of 25, 24 is to 1. So phenol dissociates proteins bound to the DNA and denatures and solubilizes them. Chloroform denatures proteins and lipids and stabilizes the aqueous organic border boundary. Isoamyl alcohol will, will prevent foaming, like the one you get when you're using uh, soap on washing. And this enables the separation of the aqueous so that it's clear. You see if there is foam, you can't tell where one layer is separating with another. Because in this process, we usually have three faces formed. We have a top layer, hydrophilic layer. This one, this is the hydrophilic layer from there to there. And then we have a small interface. You can see it, uh, sorry, you can see it here. And then now we have the bottom layer, which is the hydrophobic layer. So the, the top layer has DNA, the middle has protein, and the bottom has lipids and other cellular debris. So your interest is the top layer, which now you transfer and you can see it here. You have transferred it and into a new tube. Then after you have transferred, now you precipitate the same way we did in the previous method using cold ethanol or isopropanol. And you can, now you can centrifuge and you can wash it as many times and then dissolve it in a buffer for downstream processes. And here is the precipitated DNA. Solid phase isolation using spin columns. Again, you start with sample lysis, you clear the debris through centrifugation. Then now here you bind into what we call a purification matrix and it can be a silica binding matrix with silica membrane, diatomaceous earth, slurries or particles. And usually the nucleic acid will interact with the silica in presence of chiotropic salt such as sodium iodide and guanidine salts. Or it can be an ion exchange matrix where now you use charges or you can have a cellulose binding matrix. Now once you have bound your DNA or your nucleic acid, remember if you don't need one, you use the enzyme RNAs if you want DNA, DNAs if you want RNA. Once you have done that, on the column then you perform what we call washing using alcohol based wash buffers to remove the proteins and other contaminants so here is how it is you have lysed your sample you have loaded your lysate into the column and now this is a silica membrane and your nucleic acid of interest is going to bind on the membrane then you wash you add alcohol you wash as many times as possible two to three times and then after you have washed you also need to keep centrifuging so that you can be able to extract all the cellular debris and proteins now once you have done that you perform what we call elution dna elution elution you use nucleus free water buffered solution or te now to be able to remove your bound from the walls of your membrane here so that now you elute it here so you have eluted and that is your DNA for downstream processes. The last one is solid phase isolation using magnetic beads. And here again, sample lysis is always the first step. Use the, the method of choice. Then now we are going to add magnetic beads inside the solution. And these magnetic beads are going to facilitate the fact that now you're going to use a magnetic field 
they are going to ensure that your DNA goes towards the magnetic field. And again, after you have done that, discard the spanatant and then you can wash, put an alcohol based wash, wash again, again, use a magnetic field, draw your DNA, remove the spanatant and then finally you're going to remain with your DNA and you can directly use it or you can elute it from the magnetic beads and store it in an alkaline based buffer. Commercial kits are available. They actually are faster and they help you to maximize on DNA extraction. So if you have any need and you don't want to extract your DNA, kindly look up to organizations that are selling these commercial kits. The likes of them, Fisher, Sigma Aldrich, and so many others. Thank you so much for being part of this lesson. If you have any questions, remember you can email, you can Put your question on the inboxes or a message and we will be responding right back. Thank you so much.